this is Dave with the Shepherd School and today we're going to talk about um, side alignment but specifically we're just going to talk mostly about this front sight post okay on a firearm you've got a front sight and you've got a rear sight and you've got to line them up y'all have heard this before okay rear sight front sight okay and they should be lined up on your target where the front sight and the rear sight are equal left and right and up and down Okay, so basically it should be about right there. Okay, now, and then you put that front sight on your target. Well, the problem with that is you've got a front sight, you've got a rear sight, and you've got a target to look at. And as you can tell from this camera, it's really hard to focus in on all three things. So what should you look at? Well, it's pretty simple. Most people have a tendency to want to look at the target because you know in a self-defense situation whatever that's obviously the threat um, and in a, in, a, in a target practice type environment you want to see what you're doing right but if you look at that at that target your front sight will be blurry but you won't be able to see your rear sight at all okay if you look at your rear sight your front sight will be blurry and you won't be able to see your target at all okay so what we found is that if you stare on your front sight until it's clear, right, till it's in focus, you can see your rear sight, it'll be blurry, and you can see the target, and it'll be blurry. And um, back when I was in the Marine, you know, guys, typically, we think we can shoot, we can drive, we can barbecue, we can talk to the ladies based upon genetics, and we don't need any training whatsoever because I'm a guy, right? And, uh, and, and Marines love them to death, but they're kind of the worst. And uh, here I am, a Marine Corporal, an NCO, and I go to the range, and I'd shoot, and uh, my groups would be, you know, qualifying, um, mid-level, be a sharpshooter or so, in the target about like that. And the, uh, the PMI, the, the marksmanship instructor, the coach, whatever, would say, hey, Corporal, um, are you looking at your front side post? I'd be like, yes, Lance Corporal, I am, you know, of course I am, you know, I know how to shoot, leave me alone. And uh, I don't think you're looking at the front side, Corporal. I got this. Let me do it, right? Because the ego was involved. Well, then later, as I went to my first uh, instructor course, an RA instructor course, and they kept preaching this front sight, front sight, front sight. And I go to later firearm instructor courses, and they preach front sight, front sight, front sight. One day at the range, I said, you know, they keep talking about it. I keep talking about it. Why don't I actually try it, right? And so for the first time, I actually zoned in on that front sight till I could see the little divots and the little lines and the little creases, you know, just actually focus on it, right? And then my groups went from like this down to like that with no other input, with no other changes. And so I became a strong believer in, you know, front sight, front sight, front sight. If you read any of uh, Masa Yub's books, he talks about how he did a study of um, successful gunfights with law enforcement. And then we cut out all the variables, and uh, law enforcement typically has about a 17% hit ratio, you know, in gunfights. Out of every 100 shots fired, only about 17 of them actually hit what they're aiming at because of the stress, because of whatever. And he found, he found about 30 scenarios, and, and I'm not going to be exact, you can look his stuff up. Um, found about 30 scenarios where um, all the scenarios were the same. They were all SWAT trained officers working on patrol by themselves, low light. One bad guy, one good guy, whatever. Cut out all the variables. And in these, I think it was 33 gunfights, like 27 of them, the officers, you know, hit their target and, and were successful. The other six, um, they they missed their target, but yet they still survived. Maybe a guy dropped his gun and ran away, something, I don't know. Um, and then he, he went and, and talked to them. And what was amazing is in the 27 uh, successful shoots, you know, where the officer you know, aimed and he fired and he hit what he was aiming at and he walked away, um, the officer could, could clearly articulate, could clearly say, I was looking at my front sight, I was saying front sight squeeze, front sight squeeze, or I was remembering front sight, front sight, front sight. And in the, in the six that, uh, that weren't successful, that didn't hit their target, I mean, they were successful in the fact that they survived, obviously, but they didn't hit what they were aiming at. Uh, they couldn't say that. Where were you looking at? What were you doing? You know, well, I was looking at the bad guy, or I was, you know, peeing my britches, or, or whatever. But they could not say that at the time that they were 
activating that trigger that they were looking at the front side. So I think that's a very important thing for you to realize. Now with the target alignment, and we're going we're gonna to say this is the axis of the bore, right? And this little thing up here is the front side, and back here my little two fingers are the rear side. And we'll show you a little bit about how alignment works. All right, I don't know if you could see that, but the, uh, the rear sight and the front sight are lined up pretty well, right? And let's say on the target. See how they're lined up? Well, when we turn it sideways, you see that this front sight height and the rear sight height are equal, and it's equal left and right, and so that puts you right on the target. What happens if you, uh, you drop that front sight down? right and the rear sight's higher right when we turn it see what happens when your front sight is low in your rear sight you're going to shoot low because the axis of the bore is lower okay obviously if the front sight is higher we turn it sideways you're going to shoot high because the axis of the bore is pointing upwards same way if it's over to the uh, to the right right or it's over to the left. Right? That's why we want to put everything in line because these front sight and these rear sights are machined in. They're, they're not going to move. They're, they're stuck along the bore. Whatever they're aiming at is what they're going to hit. And it's important for you to realize the front and the rear sight are always aligned with the barrel. They just have to be aligned towards your eye and towards your target so that you have a straight line from your eye to the target. Does that make sense? They have a thing that they call flash sight picture. Woo, I about fell. They have a thing called flash sight picture that if you're at a, a combat distance, say, say uh, you know, three feet to seven feet or, or so, and you just see the front sight through the rear sight. They don't have to be lined up exactly, but as long as the front sight is somewhere along the rear sight, you're going to hit in an acceptable distance on the target. Okay, Now, what that allows you to do is balance speed with accuracy Okay, because you want hits on center mass. So if you just throw those two sights together and look through your sights and you can see the target, the front sight and the rear sight, and they're all basically lined up, you're going to be close enough for government work. Okay, But when you open up the distance then that little mistake will turn into a bigger mistake with distance. So you need to be relatively close for a, flight sight, for a flash sight picture to work. Okay. Um, what I like to say, what I like to talk about is acceptable combat accuracy, right? Because you know you, you need to hit the target, but you can't hold still, brother, and, and take 30 minutes to, to line up because Self-defense, we're talking about two-way gun range, right? Um, so you need, to, you need to get the job done, but you need to get the job done quickly, okay? So with that, if you get your pie plate, right, or a sheet of type of paper, basically a nine-inch circle, because a nine-inch circle fits right nice, you know, on the uh, uh, critical mass of the scumbag, right? And you put that on your target, and you get seven, you know, feet away, 21, you know, 21 feet away, you know, what, whatever you think is, is your likely distance to shoot. And you practice, you know, not marksmanship, because you need to get your marksmanship down. You need to be able to, you know, get a good tight grouping, slow fire before we start moving into defensive, because you got to walk before you can run. But once you have the fundamentals down, and you can take your gun, and you can aim, and you can fire, and you can get a nice group, with time and, and you want to start speeding up, what you need to do is put your pie plate out there on your target. You draw, you get on there, you shoot, and if you're getting a nice tight group, you're going a little too slow, so speed up. When you're jerking the gun out and you, and you go so fast that you're off the piece of paper, you're off of the, the, the uh, pie plate totally, you're going too fast. Slow down. And as you practice this skill, and you get where you can draw and shoot and hit that pie plate consistently all your rounds in that pie plate, you can, can, you can speed up, speed up, speed up. And as you speed up, 
you keep within that uh, nice pie plate and you're building skills, right? Uh, eventually, you get to the speed that you want, then you can start tightening that up just with practice, with repetition, with building in that muscle memory until you get a good tight group at speed, right? But you have to go um, with repetition, you have to go slow, you have to practice perfectly each time because if, you, if you're just jerking stuff around and just trying to be tactical out on the range and impressing people, number one, you're going to look like a fool, number two, you're going to build in the wrong way of doing things and if you ever have to actually use this, you're going to revert to what you've mastered not what you've read about or not what you think you can do, but what you can actually do. Okay, so front sight, front sight, front sight, and that's all I've got to say about that. So until next time, you can always catch us on the line at www.tngun.com. Thanks.